We're here at the Bloomberg U Energy Finance Conference and we're keen to get your perspective on where you think a few of the important renewable energy markets are heading. Um, uh, there has been uh, strong growth in wind uh, in the wind market, but uh, some investors are a little bit worried about uh, ongoing returns in, in, in that industry. How strong do you think wind uh, energy uh, gro growth will be in the future? Uh, we think there is, a, there is a huge potential for future growth on, uh, on the wind market as well as uh, other renewable energy markets. Of course, these markets have been hit by the uh, downturn of the economy and uh, there has been some concern in the investors about the future framework for uh, wind energy investment. Uh, that's the reason why we think it's very important that government put in place stable uh, investment framework to encourage investment because we are looking at the long-term uh, uh, perspective for these markets. And there has been a bit of a mismatch between the investment in the actual wind farms and the networks needed to distribute the power from them. Uh, I think particularly in China and, and other markets as well. Um, how can that be overcome, for example, in China? There is certainly a need to invest more on, on, on the grid, on transmissions. It's true in China, but it's true also in, in, in Europe, where the market share of wind is reaching very high level, and you see that kind of strange situation with negative prices at a certain moment. What does it mean? It doesn't mean that there is necessarily too much wind energy. It means that the grid has to be adapted and more investment is needed to have a more flexible system also on the demand side. That's why the uh, uh, issue of smart grids is so important. There's a lot of investment to be made anyway on transmissions. Uh, in China, of course, because the market is, is, is booming at very, very high pace, it's also true in, in, in the US or in Europe, where a lot of investment has to be made to uh, modernize and, and refurbish the, uh, uh, the grids. So it's an excellent opportunity to invest in, in, in smarter grids and, and grids that would be more able to cope with uh, intermittent renewable energies, which is really a challenge for the power systems today. Uh, and if I'm an investor, um Am I going to make more money investing in wind farms or in the grid companies that are building these grids? Can you give any guidance on, on where you think uh, the problem is that The problem is that it's not necessarily the same type of investors that we see on both sides. And it's, I think it's up to the regulators and to governments to make sure that, that investments are uh, going forward on, on both sides, on the generation side as well as on the transmission side. But we certainly uh, see a huge challenge on the transmission side that has probably been overlooked over the last years. And, and um, also with solar power, um, you mentioned negative prices um, in, in, the, in, in Europe. Uh, how often does that happen? Let me just go back there for a second. It's just, just a couple of times and for, for a very short period of times, like very early on, on Sunday morning, it happened three times, I think, in, in Germany. It, it means that market signals are given that there is a, a need to have more flexible systems and it's up also to the industry to cope with that kind of situation. Uh, but it's certainly a, a very strong indication from the markets that more flexibility is needed in our uh, power systems. And when you say uh, flexibility, do you mean the ability to turn down fossil fuel plants? Is that partly what you're talking about? Do, do fossil plants need, need to be uh, more easy to switch off? That's, that's certainly an option on the, on the supply side, but what we need also is a response from the demand side with, for, for instance, more uh, storage capacity. And if you have more, for instance, more electric cars, it's, uh, uh, with the, the batteries, the number of batteries that will be involved, it gives more, would give more flexibility to the, to the system on the demand side. So uh, it's, it's on both sides that we need to, to, to look into to have more flexible system. I see. So, for example, charging the battery-powered cars early in the morning when exactly. no That's one else wants exactly. the power. Exactly. And also provide the right signals to the consumers that, uh, if they, uh, that, that they, the price should be more uh, adapted to the level of supply. And uh, I wanted to touch on so the solar uh, power industry. That's um, lagging wind but catching or when, when will it uh, become uh, on the same scale as, as the wind power? The solar, solar uh, industry is booming in certain countries, but starting from a very low level. I think the main problem is the cutting costs for the solar, for the uh, PV 
uh, as well as, as concentrated solar power, which is uh, at that stage uh, uh, probably too expensive. Uh, so there is, a, there is a need to continue R&D to cut and, 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 and de developments to cut costs to make it more competitive. Okay. Um, and now uh, oil prices are uh, about 81 um, and, and quite high. Uh, can you just give us a bit of a, an idea of how you see oil demand going, given uh, the uh, uh, somewhat of a boom in renewable power? Actually, our forecast for this year is a quite a, a sharp recovery of oil demand, with a, an increase of 1.6 million barrels per day compared to last year, which was a, a very, of course, a very very low year in terms of. Uh, our demand. But what is striking is that all the increase is coming from emerging countries, especially from China and other emerging countries. In the OECD, it seems that demand has peaked now, and we see a further decline this year of oil demand in OECD countries, uh, which is not necessarily linked to the, to the boom of renewable industry. It's more the general state of the economy and, and switching to other uh, type of uh, energy. Um, but uh, I think it's a good, it's, it's certainly a good, good news from the renewable sector, globally speaking, because the oil price remains the main uh, uh, driver for energy prices as a whole. And so uh, you, you're uh, an important uh, guy when it comes to determining when emergency stockpiles might be released. Um, what sort of circumstances do you envisage in the future where that might have to happen? Or is the surge in renewable power making that a lot less likely? I, I don't think so, because you know what we're seeing is since the IEA was created 35 years ago, is that the uh, consumption of oil is very much concentrated on, on, on transportation and, uh, and on petrochemicals. So the capacity to switch to other fuels in the short term is very limited. We're talking about electric cars, plugging uh, vehicles, but this will happen over time at a, a very slow pace. If we have an oil disruption in the coming months, uh, there is no other way than using emergency stock to cope that, with that kind of situation because we are, must recognize that we are still very much depending on oil for transportation, for transportation of goods, people, for uh, aircraft, etc. And there is, no, there is no other option in the short term. Now, you haven't released emergency stockpiles since Katrina, is that correct? That's correct, yes. when, when have you been most close to releasing emergency stockpiles in the past couple of years? I think the last time was actually in 2008 when there were uh, uh, new uh, hurricanes in, in Texas, the same kind of circumstances uh, as in 2005 with uh, Katrina and Rita. And actually the disruption was the same, uh, almost at the same uh, extent as for, uh, uh, as for uh, in 2005. Uh, but uh, at that time the market circumstances were very different. It was We were in the middle of the recession with a uh, 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 shrinking uh, oil demand and, 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 and prices that were, uh, that were going down. So there was no use to, 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 to draw emergency stock at that time. But we never know what could happen. You know, there are geopolitical risks, political risks in producing countries, and uh, we have to be prepared. Are you doing something different for the upcoming hurricane season that you've, done, uh, that you've never done before in preparation? Not especially for, for hurricanes, you know, we have to be prepared to any kind of disruptions and what we're doing on a regular basis is emergency exercises. We are going to have one this year uh, with all our member countries as well as, as, as a number of uh, non-member countries of the IEA. And uh, that this is to make sure that we are prepared to face any type of emergency. And when are you having this exercise? This year, later this year, after summer. Can you say when or is it not set in stone yet? Uh, it's it's going to be it's going to be in October and November. Okay. Um, and and I know natural gas is a slightly cleaner fuel than oil. Um, are you also looking at some sort of emergency procedures for the natural gas market? Because we have seen some volatile prices, although they're very low at the moment in Europe. Yes, of course you're right. You're pointing to a very important factor. I think the main factor on energy markets today is a very low level of gas prices and that we may have to live with for a long for a long time. And I think this is also a big challenge for renewable energy. Uh, in terms of gas security, it's, a, it's an Im, a very important concern in Europe because we had a disruption in, uh, last year. Uh, we don't have an operational tool like, uh, like emergency stock in oil for, the, for gas disruption, but we are looking very carefully at these issues 
and uh, IEA Minister decided to put uh, in place a plan uh, in October 2009 to make sure that every country uh, puts in place an emergency plan for gas disruptions and the, the IEA will be, has been mandated to uh, monitor and coordinate uh, the implementation of these plans. And so, so from what date do you have that mandate? We, this, it was decided at the last uh, IEA ministerial meeting in October last year, and now we are implementing it. Okay, so, um, and, and how many countries have given you plans under that mandate? Or that's, uh, that, that's, uh, It's a process which is underway. Most of IEA countries already have uh, emergency plans, as a case in Europe and, and other, in other countries. What we want to make sure is that the whole process of how to face an emergency is well in place and we are going to do that uh, through review, uh, emergency reviews of uh, IA countries on a, on a, uh, on a, uh, in a progressive manner. And are you concerned that there might be some sort of gas OPEC forming which might um, also limit supplies? This is certainly a concern for the future because uh, of course, the, uh, uh, the way gas is marketed is very different according to various uh, countries and, and most of the, uh, of the gas is sold under long-term contracts, which gives a certain stability for the consumers. But uh, looking forward, there is, a, there is some, some concern if this uh, organization of producer were to move into, uh, uh, into a cartel, which would, would, would be very bad for the, for the gas markets, globally speaking.